The 6.5 is on the road at Dell Technologies World 2024 here in my home among homes, Las Vegas, Nevada. It's been a great show so far. And unsurprisingly, it's all about AI. There's a lot of celebrations going on. I mean, not only is it the 40th anniversary of Dell, but I think 10 years ago, you and I may have done the Dell News Desk in Austin, Texas. Yeah, we were the host of Dell World Live a decade yeah. ago. And, you, and by the way, I had no idea this was home for you. So congratulations on the move. Second home. I do, as, as analysts, this does feel a bit like our second home. We were here two day. weeks ago, and I was here six weeks ago. And we'll be here again <laughs> soon. So, but no, it's been a great day. Um, it's a setting up to make a great week, Pat. I mean, the opening keynote, Jensen Wong, Bill McDermott, and of course, Chairman CEO, Michael Dell, yes. who has so much to share and be excited about because it's been just a really strong, positive force of a year for Dell Technologies and AI. And I've said this on some of our other episodes, but it's become this great reset that has really been a explosive growth engine for Dell and for so many companies in Dell's ecosystem. Yeah, and one of the, there are a lot of conversations that go on at a big event like this and also in the industry. And one of these is, how do we get all that goodness and also make it sustainable, right? And I can't imagine a better person to have this discussion, which a second time 6.5 uh, guest here, Cassandra, who runs ESG for Dell. Great to see you. Thank you, so nice to see you too. Yes. Cassandra, one of our very favorites. <laughs> I think I said favoritist. Is that a word? Okay. Number one, you said favorite. All right. Mm -hmm. it so she, you hear what you want to hear. Um, <laughs> let's talk about kind of what's new. I mean, look, we've had you on, we was a year ago. Mm -hmm. We were through a pretty impressive period of time where ESG sustainability rose to the top. We've also seen AI sort of swoop in, become the cool new thing. Yep. And I even saw a report lately, Cassandra, that showed that the number of mentions of ESG on earnings calls has somewhat precipitously fallen. Yeah. I'm hoping it's for good reason, but I'd love to get kind of a state of the state. What's yeah. going on in your space in the area that you are paying attention to for Dell Tech? Yeah, so AI is definitely a thing. It's not boring um, right now. So the from an AI perspective, what we're thinking about right now is the fact that it's the same issues, the same environmental and social issues that we've been talking about. Climate change, circular economy, digital inclusion and the digital divide, human rights, trust, you know, ethics, security, privacy, all those kinds of things. It's the same issues. It's just AI is bringing risks and opportunities and accelerating them. Right. So we're not facing new things, but we're facing faster issues and faster opportunities to address those things. So like when it comes to climate action, the energy consumption is huge associated with the large language models. But at the same time, AI it can be used to manage your energy or your emissions and manage it much more effectively. On the circularity side, the risk is this refresh that's coming when everyone wants all the new and cool AI stuff is going to mean a whole lot of e-waste. On the opportunity side, circularity is more important than ever thinking about sustainable materials, thinking about how we create products that can be refurbished, recycled, take back services, all that kind of stuff is what we're thinking about. On the digital inclusion side, you know, of course, you know, the risk is there that the digital divide is exacerbated because the have nots right. will further not have because of AI, but the opportunity is there to use it. So we've got some cool stuff here, like with Tomas, who's a digital assistant who is helping kids practice interview skills. And we've got kids who have flown from across the globe who are part of these programs that we have in place and they're learning to use AI and they're using it for really cool things. So I know I just said AI like 55 times, but that's, <laughs> that's the reality is it is really, 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 um, you know, bringing both risks and opportunities and becoming really core to our sustainability strategy because it has to. Yeah, so I've, I've heard you talk about and I've also seen written the end-to-end -end approach to yeah. sustainability. And I wonder if you could walk us through that. What does that mean? What's the benefit to companies, society, things like that? Yeah, so 
back to kind of what AI is doing right now. So AI in, in general is causing our customers to ask a lot of questions. How do we get ready for you know, this digital transformation? How do we leverage it? All that kind of stuff. So the customer demand is huge right now for sustainability in general and sustainability offerings. The regulations are wild right now too. Mm. So in the EU with the CSRD, there's all kinds of stuff coming at global companies to get prepared to disclose like never before. Um, so with those two things converging and because of the energy consumption associated with AI, it would be easy for companies to dial back their commitments to net zero and things like sure. that. But the regulations are holding them strong because now we are going to be out of compliance if we don't do so. Those two worlds coming together are causing just so much conversation. And so what we have done is we have created what we call our end-to-end -end approach to sustainability. And what it is, is we have a backend. And our backend is, I know your smile, because it's we're trying to be cute. I, I we're like, being a little cute. I, I like structure. It's That's structured. why I'm smiling. <laughs> yeah, it's structured and it feels a little techy. So we got our back end. And so for us, that's the stuff that's like, we do a human rights impact assessment. We work in our supply chain and we have a supply chain program for emissions reduction. We have an operating model for how we run this within our company, stuff like that. That's kind of the behind the scenes back end, right? right. We have front end, which is here's what we're offering customers. Here's the products, here's sustainable data centers and what we can do to help you there. Uh, offerings might also include how we're working together in communities. So you know, some of those kinds of things. And then we have what, what we refer to as, you know, kind of the impact bucket as well. So how are we using all of this stuff for a greater good right. and beyond? And what's really cool about that, talking in these terms, like now we talk to customers and they're like, you know, we might have started a conversation that was, they wanted to talk with me or my team about sustainable data centers. But when we show them the whole portfolio and they see backend right. stuff, I can't tell you how many chief sustainability officers have said to me, wait a second, what's that op model you've got there? Because those regulations are coming my way and I don't know how to structure this inside my company. I don't know how to prepare for this. So things that wouldn't feel you know, you know, exciting or sexy or anything like that now are things that our customers are finding really valuable when we have a conversation about the back end as much as the front end as much as, you know, what do we do together to kind of address these issues? Yes, we've spent a lot of time studying sustainability, I actually ran a fairly substantial sustainability index and talked to hundreds of CISOs, yep. not security, yep. sustainability officers. Yeah. And, you know, I think it was, what, about a year ago, Pat, you and I talked about this pivot from kind of the architecture of ESG and sustainability to really a practical, meaningful approach, right. data-driven. Yeah meeting your governance shareholders where they want you to be, yep. doing good for the planet that can be measured and then sent back, not necessarily pushing so many things out 20 and 30 years. Cause there's a bit of like a great that you're doing this for 2050, but people can't appreciate like that as much as like saying, look over the next two years, here's what we're going to accomplish and being able yeah. to show it in data. So I think that's been one of the things and what we've found in these, in these surveys has been the, the, the sustainability is still really high up in terms of importance, but it's become much more practical. Yeah. And so, you know, when I made that comment about the earnings calls and the mentions, yeah. that's the pivot. Yeah. So with that in mind, though, there's less sort of kind of, you know, it's not, it's not the glam of sustainability anymore. It's about what you were just talking about, the end to end, the measurable, the practical. So as you kind of are t out there and evangelizing within the Dell community, what is top of mind for you right now to make sure you can keep the momentum um, when it isn't necessarily as much of a marketing thing anymore. Yeah, I, I love that it's not glamorous. I mean, I still think it's cool, don't get me wrong. But probably not cool to say I think it's cool, I don't know. But <laughs> I, I, I love that it's not glamorous anymore because what that means is it's actually a business imperative. Mm -hmm. It's actually, and we talked to about, it sounds like such corporate speak, but to integrate it, to truly integrate it into how you run your business is what's happening. And we have all these conversations about it's not an add-on. It's not, hey, you know, at the end of the earnings call, let's say some nice stuff. It's, no, actually, it's a part of how we develop our products. It's a part of how we're going to market with customers. It's a part of how we think on the back end as much as the front end and all that kind of stuff. So the fact that it's not glamorous is great. It's what people who have been in roles like mine for over a decade have been looking for. We don't want to be the shiny. We yes. want to be the real. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, where we're finally, you know, getting... Some people forced and some people, you know, willingly jumping in, but it's great. So you've talked a little bit 
uh, in this conversation about kind of your conversations with customers and what they're telling you. And I, I want to get both sides of the coin, like what questions are they asking you, but also what are you recommending that, that they do yeah. better to integrate sustainability into um, their processes and even the culture? Yeah. So what customers are asking us is AI and sustainability. How do you think about it? What does it mean in general? Are they voicing like, the, how do I do this? Like you've got this thing that j seems to generate a, a ton of, draw a lot of power, Yeah. like amazing amounts of power. Uh, and on the other hand, we need to get this done. Our board of directors, our competitors, right? Everything's coming after us here. Some of them are at a point of how do I do this? Many of them are at a point of where do I start? Like not, not interesting. Even, like okay. like, how are you even thinking about this right now? Right. So it's more strategic. It's, yes. Okay. Yes. It's very much in the strategic. How are you starting to tackle this? Because we're a tech company, and they're like, you. We know that you're thinking and living and breathing this right now. So right. how are you even thinking about these worlds coming together? That's where most of them are right now. Some mm. of them are beyond that, and they're like, no, seriously, how do we start implementing where right. we go? So that's giant conversation. Some of them have moved so far past that, they're like, hey, sustainable data center, we're ready. What does that look like? How right. can you package that up? What are, you know, how can you help us think through what that looks like? So we get that question a lot. Um, that's kind of on the AI side of things. But what hasn't gone away is still product carbon footprint. Everyone just wants to know the carbon footprint of what they're buying, again, right. back to those regulations. They're all gonna be regulated into it and they wanna know. So that hasn't you know, um, gone away by any means. And then the other one still, too, that is, you know, related to uh, AI, if you will, in many ways, we've been thinking about it, but it's just the circular design of all of it. We still get, especially in European customers, they're still saying sustainable materials. So, you know, when we say recycled cobalt batteries and recycled aluminum, recycled steel, low emission uh, aluminum, things like that, they love it. Right. They love it because right. they're still looking for that kind of circular design. And that's leadership we've got. So we get a lot of questions about uh, circularity. No, that's great. Well, Cassandra, I want to say thank you so much for sitting down with us, talking it through. It sounds to me like you're having a lot of very positive conversations. It seems you're moving the ball inside of Dell. And it also sounds like your kind of community of sustainability leaders are finding the mission and how to, you know, proceed in the mission in an era where, you know, we're, we're balancing AI being yeah. a really power intensive, but also opportunistic trend line and sustainability, which is something that you know, leaders around the world are holding large enterprises like Dell Technologies accountable. Yes, uh, it's cool to be in my role right now, to be like the tech company coming in and sure. talk about this stuff. It really is. It's, it's fun. just not cool to say it's, it's cool. It's hard, exactly. I, I don't say that like, hey, everyone, I'm cool and well, I'm here. You know, it's but cool. We don't have it. to say you're cool. So. <laughs> you you do hit that age. It's All right, true. Sandra, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, hit that subscribe button. We're having a lot of fun here at Dell Technologies World 2024. It's 6-5. We are on the road in Las Vegas at the Palazzo Hotel. What a show. What a week. But we got to say goodbye. See you all soon.